All right, welcome to part 31 of the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword playthrough. 20 more parts to go. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah. The game's going by, I wouldn't say relatively quicker than I thought. It's just the illusion of time just makes it feel like, hey, we just started this game. We just started this playthrough like a couple weeks ago. Yeah? No? We started this game in November. I mean, it, it, it kind of feels like it, 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 like we started it kind of kinda. recently. <laughs> it it, it kind of does just because of the way things work, and I guess our perception of time is just... Yeah, I was going to say, it, it could just be our perception of time, because I've gotten pretty bad at, at, <laughs> at figuring out how long stuff is, is pretty recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, not very good at I'm not very good at figuring out what the date is without looking it up my... like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for perspective, I think we began this playthrough, like voiceover recording it, in mid November. It is currently it is currently mid February. <laughs> I would have to look at the specific dates again, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> November's a lot longer than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah, a lot Four months have passed. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> you know what happened four months ago? Uh, Sonic Frontiers was a new game. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the time perspective of everything. I mean, it, I, I feel like just generally now, now that I'm older, it just feels like time moves faster than it has been. <laughs> oh yeah, no. That's what I generally hear from people, because I think most everyone has this feeling when they're a lot younger like it takes fucking forever for christmas to come and then when you get older like christmas is tomorrow <laughs> even though yeah it's, yeah it's, it's like christmas is tomorrow and and, and like it, it's over before you even realize it <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure what exactly like contributes to that maybe because of long school days maybe i don't know some people have long work days, which are just as egregious. So I wouldn't exactly know, but uh, yeah, I guess as 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 people get older, like time just starts to fly by, and yeah, suddenly, <laughs> so, suddenly you forgot your wife's anniversary again. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I said again because you're terrible. <laughs> uh. Yeah, today we're going to finish up the sand chip. We're almost done. We only have... We only need to find the boss key, and that's basically in the room ahead of us <laughs> right now. So we're, we just have to do that. Yeah, and if you haven't observed already, this dungeon specifically likes to do like a lot of puzzles with the bow and arrow. I mean, obviously, but I just mean it as like, you'll be making a lot of long shots. Like, if you didn't notice before, like... There's only, the, there's only the one time shift uh, stone in the entire place, and that's at the very tip top of the mass. And if yeah. you need to like activate it when you're down below something, ouch! Um, you have to like shoot an arrow through those sunlight grates, like right there. I think I'm about to do it pretty soon, actually. So you'll see. But yeah, the the dungeon requires a lot of making very long shots i mean it's a cool perspective don't get me wrong i'm not saying that that's a that's a bad thing it's just something a little different at least from all the other zelda games because usually they just make you flick a switch with the arrow like if it's right in front of you or something <laughs> but no i kind of like that you have to make a lot of long shots oh squid game <laughs> Squid game. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben, what happened? <laughs> Squid game. Or I guess not. I don't know. Oh, I don't think I need to do any more time shift. I think I can just go to the boss store now. And that's not that's not locked up or anything. So let's go and do that. Speed it up. Go go faster. <laughs> yes, the run button is there, but it's not fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yay, I did it. I was about to say, don't climb the stairs. <laughs> Just freaking leap off the ledge. I did it. I'm a gamer. <laughs> huh? 
Oh, I guess because we got the boss door key. There's one specific puzzle, puzzle with the bow and arrow. Again, one of those long shots. We must have talked over it last time. I don't know if you saw it or not. But in that hallway we just passed, there's this uh, spinning fan blade uh, off to the right. Uh, at first glance, you would think that spinning flame blade is just nothing. It's something aesthetical, you know? But if you remember, this is the past, and if you, uh, you know, set it to the present, there's no more electricity. So that fan blade is not going off anymore. And by doing that, you can actually can... There's a big enough space to launch an arrow into a switch there, and that'll unlock a door. <laughs> so that... That one particular puzzle took me forever my first time around because it was just a thing where it's like I thought the fan blades were just an aesthetic thing. But I just, I didn't realize before you can actually, you're actually supposed to do that. <laughs> so I thought that was a neat puzzle. But I didn't point it out then because it's already happened because we're about to fight the boss. You see? And what is the boss? Fuck. <laughs> oh god, it's the tentacle monster. <laughs> I've seen way too many things to know where this goes. <laughs> yeah, but no, this little cinematic thing right here, because again, the one of the good parts of Skyward Sword is its presentation. And just because of this, we're actually, that little room we're in is not actually the boss room. The entire dungeon is the boss room. So, it's fun to look at. Although, I will say, weird thing right here. Slicing these tentacles is the only time a Skyward Strike is required. I'm not sure why now they suddenly decided to make the Skyward Strike required. Because previously, the Skyward Strike was either, one, an option for a better offensive tool, or two, a side quest tool. <laughs> but, but now it's required for this boss. It's weird, I don't get it, but the presentation still good nonetheless. Now we're playing Donkey Kong. Ouch. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rooftop run be like. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost there. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about the rising water. It's just a cinematic thing. It's not actually rising. I, uh, it kind of looked like it was it was like cutscene based instead of actually like chasing you. <laughs> yeah, no. The the having like a chase like level thing like that is more of a platformer thing than a Zelda thing. Yeah. Yeah, because when there's like rising water, rising lava, stuff like that is usually in a platformer because you know it's trying to test how well your <laughs> your thumb skills are in order to make the platforms with the jumps before your time runs out but for something like this where you know you you have an actual health bar and not because again you when it, <laughs> when it's usually like a rising water or lava thing it's an insta kill right but uh that would be that would feel out of place for a game like this Look, everyone, it's Mike Wazowski. <laughs> <laughs> everyone makes the joke that this is Mike Wazowski, and... I can see it. <laughs> yeah, but, like, another thing is... I don't know why exactly people say this about this boss specifically. Because of that cool cinematic approach that they took with the boss intro, it make it feel like that the boss is somewhat cool, but the one you actually get to see its final form, it's very uh, cartoonish. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe if I look at it that way, I can see why it would disappoint some people, but I, got, I gotta say, because in all intents and purposes, this is still rather a kids game, an E10 and up kids game, to be fair. Um, but, because, uh, you know, slicing an eyeball is not exactly an E thing to do. <laughs> um, but an E10 up, yeah, that's a very E10 up thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So, it's something I don't mind. It's, it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, okay, what exactly is the fan base bitching about this time? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Because sometimes fan bases can be like that. 
We should know. We're part of the Sonic fan base. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh great, what are we bitching about this time? And so, so fan bases can get like that. Unless it's, you know, directly the developer's fault. Because, yeah, Frontiers is a good game. We're not going to forgive them for that botched marketing um, strategy. So that one was completely Sega's fault this time. But it's whatever. Watch out for the arm. Ouch. <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to know the fun thing about the bow and arrow? Um, so on the, on the original Wii version... Uh, you had to shoot it like an actual bow and arrow. So, like, you use the nunchuck to, like, pull back the arrow and then release it. <laughs> like, on the nunchuck, um, I think it was the C button. Not the Z one, the C one. The small one above the Z button. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, you had to, like, hold the, the C button and then pull back the nunchuck, and that would charge up an arrow. And then you release the seasick, and then the arrow would launch. <laughs> yeah, so trying to make it as immersive and realistic as possible. I can't yeah. shoot the damn thing. <laughs> it's almost kind of like how you play the archery in that uh, one Wii Sports one. Uh, yeah. I think it was like Wii Sports Resort, whatever that had archery in it. it, it it's, it's something kind of similar. I think it's reversed. Actually, you use the you like hold out the nunchuck and you move the the Wii Remote to pull back the arrow, but it's the same kind of thing. Gotcha. I still have yet to play uh, Wii Sports Resort, because for whatever reason, Wii Sports Resort is a... It's like it's one of those expensive Wii games that's around 50 bucks still. Yeah. I think I really like Wii Sports Resort. I actually like the, the bowling and golf in that one better than the new Switch Sports. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I like how it feels better on the, 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 the I like how it feels on the Wii compared to the Switch. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I completely forgot Switch Sports was a thing. <laughs> the, 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 the only reason I'm like remembering about it again is because the the golf update came out like a little while ago, and I, oh, I tried that. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I remember people said you don't have golf by default, man. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they they added golf to it later on and stuff like that. I tried it. It was okay. It's kind of annoying because it like it it like reminds you like hints like every like every other time you're about to like make a shot which is really annoying <laughs> oh really oh yeah, yeah, yeah like you like you would yeah you, you would like go you like get ready for a shot and then it would just be like oh remember you can check the sidebar to see how powerful your swing is or like check the map to know where you're aiming it's like yeah i know I, you told me all of this in the <laughs> tutorial already oh <laughs> really yeah it, it, it's kind of it's kind of annoying and it does that every time you play the game too i'm pretty sure which is also kind of stupid <laughs> and there's no option to like turn off notifications or whatever no um uh, and it, that's the only sport that does that i'm pretty sure yeah what okay yeah it, it, it's kind of it's kind of stupid but yeah and it, it, it and also it, it like uh I, I mean i don't really i i, I personally don't want really to see too much of an issue but i guess some people kind of uh or are kind of iffy about the golf and switch sports because it's reusing the levels from Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. Oh, really? It doesn't really. It doesn't. Oh. It, I, th I think it has a few new levels, but they're in like a special difficulty that you only get if you're doing like a three-hole game of golf. But that's about it. Gotcha. But yeah, but yeah I, I, it's just yeah, it's it's whatever. <laughs> yeah. It, so it kinda... I, I, I I still prefer the Wii Sports Resort. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, since. I didn't buy the game. It kind of feels unfinished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, it's it's like I say, it's it's whatever. I mean, it's fine if you, you like if if it's if it's the only thing you have and stuff like that. But because like because I have Wii Sports Resort and I'm able to compare the two games, I prefer the Wii Sports Resort. Gotcha. That makes sense. But yeah, I, I completely forgot Switch Sports was a thing because uh, I guess it is just kind of a nothing thing to me. Like, I understand the appeal of wanting to, you know, take the formula from the Wii, apply it to the new system because the new system is selling like hotcakes still. <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah, it's... Yeah, not having golf by default is kind of... Uh, 
Yeah, yeah they, 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 that, was, that was a little weird not having golf. I, I mean, they have it now, and like because they had golf as an update, they might add other mini games as updates too, but we don't know how long that's going to take. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Did they forget about it already? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, and, then, and then there's also the whole thing with like the the switch sports with like the cosmetics you get. I'm really I'm, even now I'm still kind of annoyed by how they do that. <laughs> how do they do it? Because you can you can get cosmetics to like customize your like character in the game, which is cool, but you have to play online in order to get the cosmetics. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already yeah, you, you can you can if you play online without like with like a like account that doesn't have switch online you get like a trial thing but you can only unlock like two items and that's it <laughs> okay with you, with you, yeah so, so you you're basically required to have an online membership to get the stuff and even then they're on like they're like limited time events and they only last for like a week or two uh... i think so you pretty much have to play constantly if you want to try to get everything which i i did for a little bit because i wanted to get like a certain uh, I wanted to get like yeah. like a certain. There's like a ninja suit that looks kind of cool that I wanted, but once I got that, I just didn't care anymore. <laughs> it uh, okay. It's not as bad as what I heard from the Overwatch 2 cosmetics, but because <laughs> the Overwatch 2 cosmetics, you have to pay real money for cosmetics. Yeah, no, so it's, <laughs> it's not as bad, but the system itself is still quite as stupid. Just you know, without the actual real money. Yeah, they, yeah. I, 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 I would wish for Switch Sports if there was some kind of way to unlock them without needing online or something. Especially because like they're only locked to like the one account. So like, cause like I have, cause like I have my account which has like online and I have a bunch of cosmetics. But like if I'm playing with like my with like my my family and stuff like that, and they're using like guest accounts or whatever, they don't get any customizations. They're only from my account because I was the one who played it with that one. Ah, uh, I see. So it's like it doesn't transfer between accounts, and like I said, you pretty much have to have online to get it. And and because they're like like timed events, because they're on like thirty or forty something right now. However, we don't know if they're going to be recycling any of the previous events. So if you don't get something, you're not going to know if you'll be able to get it again or not. Oh, I see. So they ha they haven't done a uh, recycle thing as of and, and as far as I'm aware. If they haven't recycled stuff yet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe maybe they did, and it's just been so long since I've played that I missed when it happened. But yeah, <laughs> maybe I don't know. I mean, judge <laughs> judging by the amount of stuff that uh, you've just told me about Switch Sports, it feels like a uh, yeah, that's fun for an hour or two. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's it, it's it's fun for a little bit when you're playing it the first time. Like like it's 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 okay for what it is, but I still prefer the older ones. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to never play that again. <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen again with Switch Sports. Like, I went on the other day to, like, try the golf, like, just to kind of see what it is, but I'm probably not going to touch it again. <laughs> yeah. I did it. I, I played what I needed, and that's pretty much all I, need, all I had to get out of it. <laughs> also, that... Wa landing in the water physics so unrealistic i know it's yeah, th yeah that, that looks kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> so unrealistic because if you skydive and fell in a body of water you would slap the surface of that water so goddamn hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's whatever it's a video game it don't matter <laughs> nothing has to make sense if it's a video game exactly like Man, people are saying this game's not realistic enough. One of the very first games had you throwing fire inside a body of water. Damn, that's not how you skydive, Link. <laughs> there you go. It didn't work because I had dropped off from a ledge grab. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not... Is, 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 is it something I, I noticed also, or kind of still talking about the... <laughs> like briefly about the sky. I, mean, I I don't know if you do it intentionally, but I noticed that, like every time you go to like a new area, the first time you always face plant into the ground. <laughs> I do that intentionally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because one of the very first items that you get in the game is the sail cloth, which basically is it, it's a parachute, and so uh -huh. you can just save yourself by doing that. It it um like the prompt for it always pops up whenever you're falling and like the game is warning you that you're going to take fall damage use the sailcloth 
Um, but I don't do that because it's funny. The sail cloth is just a cloth. Yeah. Or the paraglider is, you know, an actual glider. Like the glider. Oh, is it, it's like you, you can't move around with the, the sail no, cloth or anything? No, the, sa- oh, okay. the sail cloth is purely a uh, save you from fall damage. That's basically it. That is purely what it is. Well, the paraglider is actually a method of travel. <laughs> I actually remember in uh, like really old early footage of like Breath of the Wild, like before we had the final version, stuff like that, because they they showed a bit of like early gameplay of it, and I think they actually used the the sailcloth as like an early paraglider. Oh, really? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> oh well, hey, there you go, <laughs> another tick for the Skyward Sword precursor element. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 